on your end? It's okay. It's okay. Is that a good volume? Nice. <laughs> Welcome back to Quick Sixer. It's your boys, Pet Artist Adam Kinnich. Back again to show you some six topics, not six beers, because fucking sober October. God damn it. Fuck this stupid, stupid idea. Whoever brought it up, whoever made it, they're dumb. <laughs> I'm definitely not participating. Oh, I know. Um, So it's six topics, one coffee on my end, which happens to be pretty good. Actually, I'm not drinking. Yeah, I'm not drinking right now. I'm drinking this. Hmm. San Pellegrino. What flavor you got? Uh, Tangerine and wild strawberry. Ooh, a mix. Yeah, dude. Look up. I like that. Look how wild his hair is, bro. All the YouTube viewers. Oh. Check out his fucking hair. Wow. Insane. Anyways. Yeah, like I said, uh, if it's your first time here, this is Quick Sixer. We bring you six topics, usually six beers. We are going to talk about quite a quite a, an array of things in this spooky month of October. You know, we have there's a Friday the thirteenth, Halloween, there's a super moon, there's a new moon, and I think there's a blood moon this this month. Yeah. All in one month. How wild is that? And there was a uh, the eclipse yesterday. Yeah, dude. What I mean, we can, fuck, man? We'll just see what happens, you know. Yeah. But um yeah, if you like what you hear, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh you know, follow us on all of the links in our link tree that is where you click. There's probably right next to it. So go ahead and click those, see where you you like to listen to stuff and then follow us there. And we appreciate it. I think I just poked Oscar in the eye. Anyway. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Adam, I, I usually, I usually just go off on the first topic and see what's up, but yeah. I want to, I want to know what you, what topic you want to talk about first. Um, dude, I think they're all pretty good. I'm kind of excited about all of them to be honest. Oh yeah. All right. Well, you pick maybe, it uh, I'll let, you, I'll let you pick one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, me and Adam were talking about doing this show last night and uh, yesterday, I guess. And I was like, Adam's like, oh, have you watched Gen V yet? And I was like, no, I haven't watched Gen V. Love the boys. Um, hope that they yeah. they get that season up and going as soon as they can. But Gen V, this spinoff series, which I'm, I don't, I didn't read too much into it, but I think it, it sounds like it feels like it starts after the late last season of the boys. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Cause I mean, what's her name is like the CEO or whatever the, the that redhead mm -hmm. chick. Okay. Yeah. So dude, Gen V is fucking nuts. Like, <laughs> that opening. So you did watch them? Yeah. So I watched one episode last night because I was like, all oh, right, okay. well, if Adam wants to talk about it, I can at least watch one episode. Yeah. So, uh, I watched the first episode, and this main character's uh, power that she has is insane. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> and the the opening scene where she figures out what it is, bro. I was sitting in there yeah. by myself, like, how traumatizing would this shit be? Like, are you kidding me? You, I mean, what a spoiler alert, I guess, like, skip ahead a few minutes if you don't want to hear about Gen V spoilers, but <laughs> you kill your parents with your period blood because you have a <laughs> blood power? What? Yeah. Like, I was like, dude. Every, I mean, that's the thing is I've seen a couple episodes now, and it gets like crazier and crazier. Like the stuff, I mean, it's 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 cool the uh, the direction they were able to take, you know, give oh, them, yeah. you know, the freedom to take those risks, I guess. Dude. But yeah, no, I like how it's, yeah. absurd um, just the boys' yeah. universe is just in general. 
Well, that's what I was going to say. It's like if like Marvel decided to make, you know, actually R rated movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being Disney. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Like the, the mini me, um, the mini me power girl. Mm -hmm. Dude, that scene where the, she's trying to hook up with that dude and all he wants her to do is be small and punch his balls. I was just like, what? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think allergies are getting to me. Sorry for anybody who's hearing me sniffles. Um, yeah, yeah it's like it's cool. There's like a lot of campy like uh stuff too. You know what I mean? Like nostalgia for me, it was like nostalgic stuff too. Like kind of like the fact that like yeah, that she can shrink. It's like kind of like honey, I shrunk the kids in a way. You know, there's some scenes that I like feel yeah. like that, especially in the next couple episodes. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like that. I was like, man, this is a weird power. Also, though, the power does she can she only get it if she if she throws up. Like, is she, can you she only shrink if she throws up? I haven't seen. Yeah, that. yeah, that's it's like I can't. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like but yeah, she. Power. I don't want to write it for you because she can. Yeah, that sucks. But uh, man, what a wild, wild show. Um, yeah, go and go and check out Gen V. It's you know on Prime Video. Uh, each episode's what like an hour, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. So um yeah, go check out Gen V. It's just I think I don't know. I don't know if I like it more than the boys, but I like that there's different characters I have no idea about, you know? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It kinda like it feels kinda like uh X Men first class in a way. You know what yeah, I mean? Like maybe. yeah. Like it kinda stand like it, but it's kinda like a standalone, like, you know, like a sub thing from, you know, the boys. But like that's yeah. what's cool too, is like they're both equally as good, you know what I mean? I think. Yeah. I think so. Uh, I mean, they're both. I don't know. They tie in, but they, you know, I mean, they still can stand alone separately too. I feel like you don't necessarily yeah. have to watch the boys to. Well, that yeah, that was the thing. I was I was trying to get Meg to watch it with me, but she was like, "No, nah, no interest." She didn't watch the boys. No. Uh, it's like, no <laughs> Chelsea, I'm like it's, it's funny. Really Chelsea good. loves it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't, I don't want to hear like the superheroes. I'm like, it's not really about the superheroes. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, alternative. Yeah. Yeah, it's about it's like what if Marvel was real, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is wild. But um yeah, dude, I don't know. I think I like it more. I, I hope they could keep going with it. I hope there's more than Yeah, more they will. They are. Yeah. yeah. Well, Gen V, I don't know. Do you have any uh, You've watched a few more episodes than I have. Have it does it do you have like a consensus of how it's going to go or like if you like it more or less than the boys so far? Uh, I mean, I think it's like, there's some scenes that are way funnier, you know I mean? They, like, I think it's like, they, it's a lot riskier. Some of the scenes, you know, okay. especially like the, which is small punch in the balls, but uh, like so that kind of stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I think like people are going to pop up there. Like, I think people are going to make cameos from the boys. You yeah. Know? I mean, you definitely saw so, um, what's his name, the the dude that's fast. Uh huh. He's in there for at least the first episode. Um, yeah, but I think like so far, as it goes on, though, I think like you know, it's gonna start merging maybe. Yeah. 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 I hope so. I don't know. It looks cool. It looks like there's a mystery in there. I love a mystery. So. Yeah. Yeah. God. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I just have to. I think, like, you ever feel like you're gonna sneeze like way up in your nostrils, like almost yeah. like you're near your eye or whatever. Right. Yeah, I think I have that right now. But it's just a, just the one. But anyway, yeah, go watch Gen V. Um, I know. I, so next topic. This fucking sober October. God, what a dumb idea! What the dumbest yeah. idea! Whoever thought of this idea is is the worst, worst human. Because it's it's just a terrible idea, honestly. I mean, I, I bet myself that I could. I was like I was like, oh, I think I want to try this out, and like I don't want to not do it because I'm like fucking fifteen days in now, like I'm halfway there. Yeah, <laughs> but dude, so I put more stipulations on on it than just like not drinking, which is yeah actually making it more bearable in the end mm-hmm. um and not like saying like it's you know unbearable to drink for a month that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying particularly october is a dumb month to do this in 
Okay. Yeah. Because it's the start of when shit gets cold. So you're going to want like warm whiskey drinks, hot toddies, stuff yep. like that. Also, all Oktoberfest events happen in October. <laughs> most yeah. most beer festivals happen in October. Yeah. Why? Why would I do? Why would I ever? Do, I'm never doing this again. Like it's not. It's not yeah. gonna happen. I'll just pick a random other month, like July. But I think maybe maybe that's why it is a minute because it is hard. It's a hard month to call. You know. Maybe. Like I think it's like I think it's for full blown alcoholics. Like you, this is probably a hard month for you. you should <laughs> probably not do it this month. <laughs> yeah, probably shouldn't do this month because of so much temptation. <laughs> but like, I don't know. It's just annoying to me because like I actually enjoy trying as many different beers as I can. Oh yeah. So it's like yeah. there's there's so much there's so many options this month, mm-hmm. and like just the fact that oh no like you you're doing this thing. So you can't try them at any of them. It's like, ugh, come on, man. It's so stupid. But anyway, yeah, the other stipulations I'm doing with it are um, eating less sugar. Like, so not as much sugar in coffee. Uh, trying to, you know, stay away from candies and stuff. Just anything like stuff like that. Like sodas. Yeah. Shit like that. I don't really drink soda anyway, but just. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then uh what's the other stuff? Oh yeah. I've been doing yoga every day. At least ten minutes of yoga. I usually do it at night to like stretch out before I go to sleep. And uh what's the other things? Yeah, no no beers. Yoga. Oh, I've been trying to skate like once a month or once a week. Not nice. Like, yeah, like actually get out there and go and do it. Yeah, it was like I was being really inconsistent for a long time with skating, so I wanted to see if I could just put that and tack that on, so to make it better. And uh, so far, nice. so far, I'm killing it. So a few more Good weeks to go. Thanks, man. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, I just wanted to go off on the on fucking sober October, dry January too. Can fuck off. It's dumb. Um, <laughs> all all these these dedicated. These dedicated sober months are stupid, I think. Like, just just don't be just don't be an alcoholic, maybe, or don't be a drug addict or whatever. Like whatever. moderation. You mean like so what are you saying? You think it like you think it should just be done like in moderation, like or yeah, you're just, just saying like, like just, just do it, stop to you know, stop if you need to stop, you know. Yeah, just stop just, if you need to stop. Don't don't, don't try yeah, to make a don't make it a theme. <laughs> yeah, don't theme it. Don't <laughs> don't make a month out of it. It's just like, why, why, you know, why did you have to like, this is the month, you know, we're going to, this is the yeah. time we're going to do it, you know? Ugh. Oh, also like go to the gym, like three to four times a week now too. Just try nice. that's tacked on there too, but I've been doing that anyway. But, um, yeah, man, it's just like, why, why are we, why are we have like, I don't know, like, who made it to the point where, like, this was a necessary thing for them like, to make this a, oh, we're going to, we're all going to hunker down and not do any of this shit this month. Because, it's yeah. like, bro, like, I get it. You're probably an, an addict or some kind of, you know. Yeah. Uh, Dude. Have some, some, you're struggling with some shit. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. It's just. Don't make it sound fun. That's what I guess what I'm getting at is it's not fun. It's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm getting at. Anyways, have you ever tried one of these these sober months? No. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I mean, like, because I mean, I'll just stop. Like, you know, what I mean, I'll take like a couple of days, like, in between, you know, in the week to like not drink. You know, what I mean, and like, things when I'm when I'm working, I don't usually like you know drink as much either. Yeah. I guess during the week, but. Yeah, I mean, I usually only have it on the weekends key. anyway. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, moderation's key. But like, that's that's where I'm getting at. It's like, who needed a whole month to decide to like, oh yeah, or cut off a whole month, you know? Yeah, who needed this? But I don't know. I mean, I've always thought dry January was dumb, so this is no different. So yeah, just 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 giving it like a in the thick of it review i guess is what i'm getting at the thing in yeah. in review 
Sober October <laughs> is trash. So, anyway, that's my two cents. A motherfucking sober October. <laughs> Not a fan. It's just dumb. Just dumb. If you yeah. like beer, it's a dumb month to do this. Uh, shout out to Oscar in the corner if you're watching the video. Um, yeah, that's that's my two cents on that. Um, speaking of sober or October's, I really need your opinion on Mars and beers or Oktoberfest beers. All right, so you probably heard this story, but like I'm not, I don't know, I can't do Oktoberfest beers anymore. Like, I mean, maybe like if it's like a good brewery and like you know, oh my god, maybe you know, mm-hmm. but uh, like Sam Adams Oktoberfest, like ruined it for me. Really? Yeah, like there was like a night where like Chelsea and I went to to a bar and like had like some appetizers. And I mean, they were like chicken skewers, so we got food poisoning, but we don't know if it was from the beer or Ooh. from the chicken. But so. Yeah, both. Of you. But there was like a promotion of like, yeah, there was a promotion for like Sam Adams Oktoberfest, you know, like three bucks or whatever, you know, yeah. you get like a bucket. And uh, <laughs> do we I? Had chill- we had a Chili's. No, no, it was like it was some bar in Midtown. Like, I can't remember, but oh, okay. yeah, I was just like I remember waking up the next day, like, oh my god, yeah, like, like they're okay, but like all those beers for me, it's like it's like you. For me, I would want one and be done with it. You know, that's why we never buy like a six pack of it or like pumpkin yeah. beer. Like, I don't know. Okay. Same, same deal. Yeah. Like, I can't. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's my thing. I don't know if, um, I think I've said it on a couple of shows so far, but, um, I just did the fall beer tasting with Sobros Network and we did mm-hmm. a, um, a bunch of fall beers, including, but not limited to pumpkin beers and Oktoberfest beers and just like and just like Mars and style beers or whatever. Gotcha. And um, see, I mean, like, I think it's more like a ball, like a, like more like brown ales. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's about as crazy as I get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're doing that, and um, you can go check it out on Sobros Network. I think on their YouTube. It's on live. Ugh. And uh, yeah, we tried sixteen beers, Jeez. and um, yeah, and it was not not like we drank sixteen beers. We just tried, yeah, them. no, so, yeah, um, like barely, Taste barely this. even like yeah. a taster type of situation for most of them. And like by the end of that, dude, I was just like, dude, fuck these, like fuck these beers, yeah. Like, like were there any that stood out? Or are they all gonna were the same? Or um, there were. Was- Definitely, anything actually like I, drinkable <laughs> yeah definitely i suggest definitely go and watching the um the full show but there was like two or three that were actually really good gotcha. i think we ended up all finishing like those ones yeah. but the rest of them just like there was a few that i was just like dude this is dog shit like this is really bad yeah what i hate too is like i mean i guess people like them. i mean i don't know like i just don't like do you think they sell well i mean i would like guess to see like the case study of it of like how much they actually sell because you know, I mean it also seems like every brewery is like pressured into fucking making an Oktoberfest or pumpkin yeah. beer and I've talked to like a brewery or two about it and they're they're always like yeah it's like a thing that's always comes up and like somebody wants to make it and like that seems dumb you know but I guess like if you are if you're like some you know just a random consumer going to these breweries or whatever for a Saturday in October, you're expecting yeah. probably an Oktoberfest beer on the menu. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, if, what if there's like, you know, head brewers are like, man, fuck it. I don't want to make it. I hope and so. And then they I get people like coming in and they're like, hey, do you have an Oktoberfest? <laughs> I hope there is somebody that's like legit like, fuck Oktoberfest. Like, that should be their beer. And it's but I mean, like it's a, probably it's like, a, you know. it's like an IPA, you know? Yeah. But I mean, most breweries <laughs> it is. I mean, it's like I feel like if you're a brewery, you're gonna celebrate Oktoberfest, you know? Yeah, no, hundred percent. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know. That's just, I'm just. I guess it, the the point is, I'm just over them. Like it's just not as yeah. fun as. Well, how do you feel about like even like uh like around Christmas when they come out with like, you know, like oh, limited edition like Christmas styles or like shit. yeah. yeah. 
Um, dude, there. I think the holiday ones are are even more hit and miss. Like, yeah, you can, there's some that are pretty good, and like I, I tend to buy like the variety packs of all of these things. So it's like, um, if I see something like that has that my my like variety pack choice is like if there's two beers in the variety pack that I haven't had and it's like out yeah. of four, then I'm gonna buy it. Gotcha. I don't even care how much it is, but but um yeah, it's like if there's two in there that I haven't had. Like I just did this I just did this yesterday actually. There was a um variety pack of the new or of the Voodoo Ranger series mm-hmm. that uh, from New Belgium that Two of them were like exclusive to this pack, and I I don't think I tried them before, so I was like, oh, I guess I'm gonna buy this. Now she's are always pretty good. Yeah. yeah, the Voodoo Ranger series is fire, but uh, I don't know. Man. Was it like the have you had the like Juice Force one or like Juice oh, Force yeah. is one of them, but it's like the Juicy Pack or whatever. whatever yeah, I had the Juicy Pack. This one is uh, I'll send you a picture later, but it's yeah, sure. it's um. What pack it is, but it's one that I hadn't seen, and I was like, "Huh." Two of them I definitely had, but it was like two of them. I was like, "Oh, I haven't had that one before," so I had to give them a go. So I guess you know, check that review in November. I guess, like, <laughs> God damn October. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, man. The holiday beers, they're always. I don't know. What do you think? If they're like they're, I mean, they're... I enjoy the Christmas ones because it's like 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 I said, it's stouts and they're not they're not like they're more traditional. I feel like than like the stupid like pumpkin elves or yeah. like the candy corn, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, maybe that's the thing, dude. Like these like Oktoberfest slash like fall beer um, flavors, they're just really sweet, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm not liking them. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I I might prefer the Christmas style um, of stuff that comes out. And there's usually like some like pretty cool, like fun stouts to have, like you know, mm-hmm. peppermint stout or something. And I, I love yeah. fucking love mint, so it's like the Beta in New Orleans has a good one uh, for Louisiana, but uh, it's the it's called Office Party. It's like a limited series thing they do. Yeah. But it's like kind of like, a, I can't, it's more like a brown ale though, I think. But yeah, it's like, and it's like a 6.5 or something, I believe. Like, okay. pretty okay. good. Yeah. It was crazy. But it's that. like, it's like Christmas flavors, like yeah. peppermint and something. Yeah. What's crazy about the stout game is like, motherfuckers stay making stouts like 12 point something percent. Yeah. Like, it's like, Jesus Christ, man. Like I can only drink one of these, and it smells like booze. Like it's like very boozy smelling. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I like the the fucking stouts are great. They're so good. Um, but then like, if I have too many, the 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 problem with stouts though is you can't have too many. Like yeah, like yeah. they're stout for a reason. Also, <laughs> like you're gonna shit yourself the next day. Like, yeah, it's gonna be bad and. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, man, I don't know. I think I'm more for for Christmas sea time beers than Oktoberfest beers. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna add that to the to the notes. You know. All right, bro. Okay, there's a there's a lot of a uh, lot of lot more topics on here that we're pro- we're not going to get to but i want to talk about we were just talking a minute before the show i want to talk about mike flanagan okay this motherfucker okay um probably the best thing that's happened to netflix in a while to be honest you know each year he comes out with one thing for netflix and it's usually a killer like it's usually great um, since 2018, he's done one thing that's usually gone to Netflix at some point. And uh, 2017, my bad. Um, he did Gerald's game too. Anyway, this dude, 
I don't know. Uh, it's weird to see. You either have somebody like, I don't know, like a, a director come out the gate like swinging hard, and they they usually have like a big hit or something, or it's a fucking huge loss, or it's like there's like three three camps, I guess, or it's like some like thing that people will eventually consider like a cult classic. So, I think this dude is one of the few dudes with like. With time, I mean, at least according to, like, IMDb, people like his stuff even more. Like, his ratings just keep going up on IMDb, which is, like, it's really weird. I don't think I've ever seen anybody like this. Like, he started out mid, and now, like, people really like his shit. I mean, I would say it's kind of like Ryan Murphy. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'll bet Ryan Murphy's is pretty similar. <clears throat> but like I don't know man it's just the stuff he does is just like it's it's very interesting also I think he does horror good I mean, as far as yeah. like TV shows go like TV show horror is really hard to do yeah that is true and I think he was like really killing it like the stuff he puts in it it's like all right, so basically we're talking about this because the fall of the House of Usher just came out. And uh, on Netflix, go and check it out. It is, even the first episode, there's like scary stuff in it that you're, that's not scary, but you're like, oh shit, this could lead to some like wild stuff, you know? Yeah. And uh, particularly there's one scene where um, it's like, you know when you're watching something that's supposed to be scary and then you know something's in the background you're like oh shit you know that's back there like yeah in this particular episode there is a point where two characters are sitting down on opposite couches and one of them says like oh something is behind you and the other dude is like that's cool i'm not gonna look and you see it like the viewer sees it but he doesn't turn around and then the thing walks away and you're like what the fuck like no one does that it's usually like it's there to serve a purpose and like it usually will be like some kind of like shock horror type of deal but it, in this case it doesn't you know it's there like it's it's like it's like you yeah. and the and one character know it's there but then the other one just doesn't care, which is like, it's a weird, I don't think the awareness is an interesting factor, I think, in that yeah. particular scene, which is like, I don't think you see very often. But I don't know. Do you have any, any takes on this, dude? No, I mean, yeah, it's like, yeah, like, I get what you're saying. That is probably like, like he does kind of like, but he makes like, um, like every scene's kind of dark and then he hides like, you know, kind of stuff in the shadows that you don't, I mean, it took me a second to realize, <laughs> so, you yeah. know what I mean? This stuff's like kind of hot. Like, oh shit. Yeah. But it, that is what, yeah. It's just, I don't know. I remember um, watching the haunting of Hill house and being like, which is his highest rated thing. Yeah. And, uh, but this show feels like that too. Like, yeah, it's got it the same. Fun. He's got the same aesthetic. That's what I was saying. Is like I feel like it's like, you know, hopefully it doesn't go down the path that Ryan Murphy did, where it was just like kill into oh, oblivion. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Ryan Murphy definitely. Because yeah. American Horror Story this season is awful. <laughs> oh, I haven't even did. I looked at it and I was like, the Kardashians in this in it? And even the, she's not, not even good. the she's not even that bad in it, dude. That's not what makes it bad. Really? <laughs> like, yeah, okay. yeah. I saw the trailer for it and I was like. I'm good. It's overdone, like just stupid storylines that just like recycled, yeah. recycled the same shit over and over. Did they try? Did I was trying to tell Dill, he uh, they started watching American Horror Story from I think the the start. And yeah, I'm the sure. first three or four seasons are great, and then after that, it just like like lost yeah. his way or something. I don't know. Like I was trying to tell him, I was like, dude, it there's a steep fall off. Like yeah. Like it, it starts good. I never watched that first season, but I did watch two, a, a couple of them. And Asylum uh, and like the Asylum is uh, really good. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, dude, it's just like that's why I guess what I'm saying is like I don't you usually see somebody do something either peak and then like you know they do some like mid type shit and then like maybe they'll peak again. But yeah, this Mike Flanagan guy just keeps. I think it's like it's like you know you, you say the, the people say that um you stop learning at a certain point, but I feel like this dude you just keep he just keeps getting better. Like it's I don't know. I it's almost like uh. I can't. I can't even imagine the pressure of whatever he's gonna do next. You know. Yeah. Actually, there is an upcoming. Apparently, the life of Chuck is who he's in pre-production for. I don't know what this is. Uh. Oh, it's based on a Stephen King thing. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Which he did, Doctor Sleep, which is yeah, pretty crazy. But anyway, yeah, I guess that's our little rant on Mike Flanagan. Uh, well, actually, you know, I mean, it, he is good. I mean, I, I, it's like I, I, yeah, I mean, like I don't know, maybe the Ryan Murphy thing's too much to compare him to, but like, I it just, know. yeah, maybe not. So, um, so, I mean, this, I mean, so far everything that he's done is way better than, <laughs> yeah, I think so. At least more elevated, that's for sure. Yeah. Um. Have you seen you seen Haunting Hill House, right? Yeah, it's I mean when it came out, you know, yeah, it's been some years, but yeah, I think, dude, uh, if I was gonna rank these like the ones that I've seen so far, I think this is better than that, but the Fall House Usher, yeah, huh. yeah, I'm, I'm because like what I'm... what I read too, someone was I know you you haven't watched Succession, have you? No, I should. So I someone kind of someone kind of compared it to that. It was like this is like uh. Well, the House of Usher is like succession, but with horror because the whole family dynamic. But uh, you know, I mean, it's, it kind of is like, but it's kind of like you know, it's an easy comparison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's dude. There's just so many people in it. It's really. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, are they all? Are all the episodes out? Yeah, they're all out, right? Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Should be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. I think I was gonna go to a show tonight, but since that got canceled, this might be the rest of my day. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this show will probably be like the, the, the most streamed thing this weekend. I would imagine. They just. Oh, it just came out, didn't it? Yeah. Friday. Oh hell yeah. Okay. Cool. Anyway. Um. Yeah, I guess we should move on to. Why don't you, why don't you pick one of these now? Uh, All right. and, and then I'll I'll save the louder than life story for the the end. <laughs> All right. How about best cozy drinks? Okay. Yeah, best cozy drinks. I guess you know it. This is this maybe not a, a cozy drink for most people, but like what we were talking about with stouts earlier, I like it when there's when a stout is really high percentage, like uh, ABV, because usually if I have one that that that's that high, I drink it really slow for some reason. Yeah, and it feels like a. I don't know. It feels like this is maybe a weird thing to say, but it feels like it's a like a big, not a big whiskey, but like a big alcohol drink that you can drink a lot of and not like get super fucked up. Whereas like if you poured that much of like a whiskey in the same cup, you'd be you'd be faded, you know? Yeah. You'd say it feels more like a cocktail when it has the. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. It feels like a cocktail that you can drink a lot of instead of like drinking a little amount and feeling it, you know? Yeah, gotcha. Maybe. I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let us know <laughs> in the comments if that makes sense. But um, that, and I, you know, you got to give a shout out to Hot Toddies, you know? Got to. Yeah. No. How you feel about ciders? Apple ciders with some some dark rum. Ooh. What? 
apple cider with six. dark rum? That's what I mean. I usually do. Really? Yeah. Hmm. You have to send me uh... And then, like, you put it in a pot and, like, let it simmer with some cinnamon sticks and some apples. Oh. Okay. Okay. We're talking about, like, some Kraken or something? Something like that? Yeah. Some Kraken, whatever, really, whatever you want to use. So, uh, what do you do? Does the alcohol burn off, though? In the... Do it? Does the alcohol no, because you're like, off? you have it on low, so it's like simmering, you know what I mean? Or you can like, or like, more so you just pour it, like you pour the alcohol in it after you like pour it into your cup, you know what I mean? Put a little spike a little bit. I see. Okay, so yeah, you're going to send me whatever, however this process works. But um... essentially, you just get some apple juice and put it like on a simmer on the stove and then take some cinnamon sticks. An apple, just straight up apple juice, not apple. Yeah, cider. and then or like you can put like apple wedge in there, and then they usually put like an orange or two, like half an orange, and let it all simmer together. Then mm-hmm. you know when I take it off and pour it into a cup, pour some rum in it. I have to try this. That sounds great. Yeah, dude. Uh, is it called something? Yeah, cider. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, I didn't know that. Had some kind of weird name. Uh, it's just like an alcohol cider, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. So just put it in a pot, good. warm it up. Yeah, but it's like oh, a, cool. take an you orange and cut it in half. Put just like oranges. Some cinnamon in there. Yeah, some cinnamon, just cinnamon sticks and like oranges. Some star of anise in there. Yeah, put every one in there. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll fuck with That's that. That sounds cool. Yeah, I was thinking about it today. It's just gonna get chilly outside here. Yeah, dude, the high here is only. It's not even 60. Yeah, I know. It's like kind of same. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah. But in uh, like a good old fashioned too, man. Oh, yeah. Dude, old fashioned, you know, I don't know why, but like it has definitely become like, I don't know, maybe a, a standard setter for me. Like at, at places, if we go to any kind of, like if I'm going to yeah. drink, if I'm going to drink like booze that night, um, or spirits, if I'm going to drink any spirits. And uh, early uh, place, it's definitely. I usually will order one of those. Yeah, and like especially if they have some weird one, you know, like oh this mm-hmm. one has like some fucking I don't know, blood orange in it or something, you know. And I'm like <laughs> okay, cool, yeah. you know. Yeah, I like that blood orange. But uh, yeah, man, I I don't know. I think that's a good one. Else, what else is a good drink? Like a good, cozy drink. I don't know. Like I think like, spiking hot chocolates and stuff is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, like yeah, a, like with a Kahlua or something, Kahlua. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely like a uh, an Irish coffee. That's that's always good. Yeah, throw some JMO and some coffee or with some Kahlua. Yeah, pretty good, but definitely stronger than you think it's going to be yeah every single time because <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know i when it gets cold like cold cold you know having some of that shit in the fridge is pretty nice popping your coffee yeah especially if you're just gonna it's hang true. you know for sunday or something yeah yeah you know got shit going on so dude so good. I don't know. I know we're just like went quiet because we're like, ah, <laughs> so nice the warm drinks. Cool. Also, just like I don't know, this may be not a cozy drink, but just like just like sipping, just like just like flat out whiskey. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. sipping it, like not like you know throwing it back. Dude, I bet it's nice. You remember that uh, that photo sent you of that tip tip top cocktail thing? Those yeah, cans. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had that? Have you had those things? Uh, I'm maybe not. I don't think so. No. It's like I mean they're kind of expensive. I mean it's like they're like sixteen bucks. Like at least the like at yeah. the place I went to, like sixteen bucks for like four of them. But I mean they're like it's a full on cocktail per can. It's just like all measured out, and you just like shake it real good and like pour it. No, oh, these giants. Here. But uh, but the one I had was the Jungle Bird and. Yeah, yeah, Jungle Bird. That shows like Chelsea didn't like it, but it was like it's just like rum. This is on the cans, like rum, uh, uh, red bitters. It doesn't say on the can. Okay, but it was like lime. It's like yeah, it's like lime, red red bitters, and rum, and that's all it is. 
And you can send me some. But it's like a tiki drink. That's pretty good. You can send me some good pictures. But yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, but but it's pretty, but it's pretty good. But anyways, they make like a, uh, they make like a Manhattan. They make a margarita. They make an old fashioned. But I'm curious about the old fashioned. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I have some pretty. Then like Bullet makes one too. That's like it's a whole bottle. It's already made. Yeah. Like you know, twenty bucks or something. A couple of people do that. Yeah, um, it's I okay, think, but yeah, I think I want to try. Speaking of, I want to try. Um, I don't know if I've tried it yet with the the IPA Jameson. Mm-hmm. Have you had that yet? No, it's been out for a long time. But yeah, they have two different ones. I think they have a they have an IPA Jameson, and they have uh, another one that's like some kind of I think hop flavor type of deal but is it like i guess i'm confused by that like is it like it was like a knife here i'm gonna i'll I'll try i'll find it real quick and see what it says because it's like it's got yeah jameson castmates ipa edition okay that's what i was gonna say so it's just Um, like it says it's um jameson uh, Casper's IPA edition combines Jameson Irish whiskey finished in craft Irish pale ale seasoned barrels for crisp hoppy notes. So it's like gotcha. They just use the barrels. Yeah. So it's like it's like the opposite of like I don't know like cask beers mm-hmm. because you know they're using the yeah. cask barrel the beer barrels for the Jameson, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, there's two. There's two or three of them. Oh yeah, here it is. There is a IPA edition, a stout edition, and I think a tri- does this say triple IPA? Yeah, I think so. But yeah, you can get it. Um, that's that's kind of cool. It comes in the three pack. You get you can get like a small version or three pack. That's pretty cool. But. Yeah, I haven't tried that. I haven't tried either any of them. I want to. I like that. Anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, let us know what your cozy drinks are in the comments. And I'm definitely gonna try that uh apple cider thing or apple juice thing. But does it matter <laughs> if it's apple juice or apple cider? I mean, yeah, it's cider, so I mean, oh. you know what I mean. Just use apple juice. I mean, they sometimes like you, um, like at Whole Foods or whatever, any grocery store, they'll have like just a cider in like the gallon, you know, like it's just apple juice, but it's more like, you know, yeah, but it's like more like, you know, concentrated. Like it kind of has more than they have a a Martinelli's junk at the store. Yeah. All right. I get that probably. All right. Cool. So, all right. Cool. So I'm kind of bummed Dill's not on this episode because I wanted him to hear this story. Um, but we're gonna close out this episode with a little story about Limp Biscuit. <laughs> that I already told you. Uh and <laughs> it's just it's ridiculous, okay? Um <laughs> it's it's really ridiculous. To be honest, um, I'm trying to figure out. Hold on, I, I gotta figure out what the name of the song is before I tell the story. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I think it's called. I have to listen to it for one second just to make sure that it's the right song <laughs> but there's a story behind it all right cool <clears throat> now that i have this pulled up okay so this past two months a month ago I, me and Meg attended um, a festival called Louder Than Life, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. And we decided to go for a few reasons. Okay. The few reasons were, and I already told you the story, so I don't know. I don't know how much you're going to care, but this is for everybody (laughs) who hasn't heard it yet. 
Um, so we decided to go to this festival for a few reasons. The few reasons were, and we only went the, for the Friday night. It's a four-day festival. We go up to Louisville. Uh, it's Friday night. or We get there on Thursday. We go for Friday. We wanted to see only three bands that were playing the whole day. That's it. That's the only reason we went. And the three bands were Kitty, who's having a big resurgence right now, which is kind of weird. Um, Limp Biscuit and Tool. Limp Biscuit being the main reason we wanted to go. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, the judgment on your fucking face is so <laughs> nasty right now, okay? <laughs> so, anyways, um, if you haven't, <clears throat> all right, I urge you to take a uh take a look at the festival documentary about Woodstock ninety nine before you listen to the rest of the story. Pause, come back. Also hit subscribe when you come back. But anyways, so in in uh what's it called? Yeah. In two thousand in the year two thousand, Limp Bizkit did a song for the Mission Impossible Two soundtrack. Okay. <laughs> called Take a Look Around. Okay, which is on it's on their album uh Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavor Water. Okay. And uh <clears throat> We're having a good time at this festival. We get there. It's all right. So let's start off the day. All right. We don't want to be there till the afternoon. So we're dicking around. We go to lunch or whatever. And then I call a Lyft or Uber or whatever to get us there. And we're we're staying downtown in this old haunted fucking hotel. Okay. So we stay in this haunted hotel. And uh so I get this lift and it takes fucking forever for this guy to get here. Okay. And I'm like, dude, what is going on? Yeah, and I called it a little early thinking it would take a long time with traffic or whatever to get there, you know, cause festival traffic is always bad. Yeah. And, um, dude pulls up, doesn't say a word. Okay. When we get in the car, I ask him if it's, you know, him, I'm not like some crazy who just gets in people's cars. So, um, confirm that it's our driver. We get in, and then, um, you know, we're just driving or whatever a little bit, and he goes, you guys in? You guys are in for this festival? And I'm like, like yeah, obviously, it's in your GPS. And uh, he starts to drive, and he's like, I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you away that n- not even some of these locals know. I've been here a long time. I know I know how to get here quick. I said, okay, <laughs> cool. He's like, yeah, man, none of these locals even know how to get there. I said, all right, cool. He's like, we're going to have to go through the airport, though. I was like, what? And uh, so the festival grounds for this thing are right next to the airport. right? You're seeing planes take off and fly off all day. Wow. It's like, yeah. It's really weird. And uh, so anyways, <clears throat> sure enough, this motherfucker starts driving up into the airport on the like the departures ramp. And I'm like, what <laughs> is this dude doing? And uh, we, you know, we go by departures. The our airport seems pretty nice. Um, and we like going through. We go through the full line of like cars that are waiting there, and then we whip around like we're gonna exit the airport and get like pop on the highway or something. But dude just like cuts up, takes a left, and like we're literally at the fucking festival like right then. Oh wow! And I was like, holy shit! You know, this took fifteen minutes. I was gonna. So say it was like a. It was like an entrance like from the airport into the festival. Yeah, so it was like <clears throat> this dude knew a road that connected to the main road that got into oh, the gotcha. festival and just happened to be through the airport. So I was like, all right, cool, man. You know, that's what's up. Like, thanks for dropping us right at the front of the line. It was pretty rad. So anyways, cool. uh, yeah, we go in. Um, I got to say, I got to really give props to this festival louder than life. Like probably the most organized and debatably clean festival I've ever seen. Like it was, it, it was impressive, like to say the least. Um, 
the way to get in and out with rideshare was incredible. Like they had a they had contracted a taxi service to where you could get in and out like immediately, which is really cool. That's, that's cool. Yeah. And um they had a whole like rideshare area that was like super easy to like navigate or whatever. Um all their signage was really great. Um bathrooms were clean, like it was spread out enough to where there was like merch stuff you could get to and stuff. It wasn't like crazy. Yeah. Beer tents were super chill to get drinks. Um food was okay, you know. It was it was pretty pretty impressive. Uh but I mean they had all the normal shit like you know, pizza, euros, like stuff like that. But uh yeah. They they had this one thing that I think is really interesting. They had every place where there was a stage, they had two stages. And so they were connected, right? They had a, like a tent, uh, not a tent, but like they had a separation area thing, but two stages right next to each other, same crowd. Like there's no nothing in between them, right? And they're fa- the stage is facing the same way. Like it was just like a long stage, but they, they were separated. And um, the way it worked was basically if you had... They had the lineups, you know, posted or whatever. If you had people back to back right there that you wanted to see, you'd literally just kind of like camp out. You can hang out the whole day. And it was really cool because one side, like one stage would have somebody go on while the other side was like setting up the next person. So one one side of the stage would play like a full their full set and then almost immediately the other yeah, side would start like as soon as they're done. So it was like, there was no, I, I don't know. I can't, I think we're, um, what I'm doing is I'm comparing it to like a festival, like Bonnaroo where you have your main stages and you, you know, you have to wait in between like, so people can set up. So people are constantly going yeah. to like all the other stages. In this case, you can stay in the same spot the whole time, which is, it's pretty That's rad. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, like, it lends to, like, an easy, like, an ease of access. So you kind of, like, you know what's... Yeah, it's like, you're kind of getting, like, you know, vessels are kind of getting more creative in that sense. Like, where, yeah, you, like, there's a stage over here and a stage over here. And all you got to do is literally turn around. And, like, after that set's done, to catch that set. Yeah. And, like, the, that music festival we went to where it was, like, Jamie XX and LCD Sound System, yeah. kind of the same deal where it's, like, one stage, but, like, a one-day music festival or a two-day music festival, you know what I mean? Where it's yeah. the same stage, but everybody just plays back-to-back instead of, like, oh, now you gotta go over here, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm th- I think, you know, what it comes down to is really the um people people have a really small attention span now. So, like, if yeah. you hit them... Like this show's on, as soon as this one's done, the next one's on. It like it works really well, and uh, I was just like, I don't know. I was I was impressed by that too. I thought it was a really cool yeah. setup. So, and like the other thing is like you know how they have big screens for all these shows, like yeah. all the screens on there's like four screens, and like each state, even the dead stage is like showing what's happening on the one that's live. So you're, like, cool. you're seeing everything, you know? Yeah. It was really cool. But anyways, that was cool. we go, um, we see some like random ass bands. This is like a metal festival. So it's like, it's all like, like hardcore shit and like metal and all, like all this, like everything. There's no not metal there, you know? So we see some like random bands waiting to see, I think Kitty was the first up that we actually wanted to see. Um, we're standing there. That crowd, we, we stood in this one spot, right? And I was like waiting because this other band, the other band on the, like I just said, like the opposite stage was playing and they had like their crowd. And I was like, oh, cool. They're, I never heard of them before, but they're doing good. And then uh, Kitty gets on and then we noticed that we're stuck. Like, you know how, you know, remember what happened to me and you when we saw Radiohead? Oh, yeah. Like how it's just, you mean, you get yeah. caught in the crowd or whatever. Well, like we sat in one spot for a long time and then all of a sudden there was 
thousands of people behind yeah. us. You yeah. Know? And it was hard to get out. This happened to us there. And it was so surprising. And uh, the thing is, we had, we were like, all right, we're going to have to watch. We're going to watch this and then immediately walk over to see this Limp Biscuit show. Because it was like back to back, which is cool. And then it was like right back to back to Tool. So it's like, all right, that's cool. So we see the kitty thing, walk over. And the kitty did great. Walk over, see that whole set. <clears throat> and then uh, we start to hear Limp Bizkit start. And I'm like, this is great. You know, I'm excited. I already have, like, definitely have a few drinks in me. I'm like, good to go, right? Super, mm -hmm. super chilling. Also, it dawns on me, as soon as they start playing, I'm like, dude, <laughs> how fucking ridiculous this is. <laughs> In 2023, we're seeing a Limp Biscuit show, and it just—I don't know—it just tickled me a little bit. I could—I—I I couldn't stop laughing that we were seeing this show, and it was just like it was the most ridiculous thing ever. So much fun, okay. But then again, I definitely urge people to look to watch this fucking uh, documentary about Woodstock '99. So. When that was happening, when Woodstock 99 was happening, me and Adam were kids, right? But MTV made this thing live. You could watch it on MTV. So when that happened, um, at the time, like, you know, it was barely, barely cell phones were around. And uh, people were, like, really into the show that they were seeing because there's no nobody holding up their phone recording it or anything like that. It was like... It was a very, like, you were in that shit, you know? So, <clears throat> these particular bands were huge at the time. Were like, people like Limp Bizkit and Korn and you know, probably Deftones. Like, people that had, yeah. like, a, a, a very good mosh pit scene, is what I'm saying. I guess we could say. And, like, some of these people, like Limp Bizkit, were known for how insane their mosh pits got. And uh, it was always, like, a thing in the back of my head that, like, man, that would be... Because I've I've never been, like, a, a dude that's going to get in the pit. Like, even when we were going to, like, well, what, so, shows all the yeah, time. Yeah, so what you're, what you're saying is you thought you were going to relive Woodstock 99 at this show. Well, no, I was... <laughs> so the thing was, like, I... Because, you know, thing, like... The thing that popped in my head was, I know there's a pit up front. Like, I know it's there. Yeah. I, and I, if I get to see this, this band, ever, I want to go and experience that. Even though I was, I've never been to, like, a pit dude. Like, me and, me and Adam went to a ton of hardcore shows in our high school days. And, like, I was never that guy. Like, definitely I'll stand on the outside or whatever, but never the dude in there. Like, it's just not my thing. So... Uh yeah, thinking about this Limp Biscuit thing, I was like, I just want to see if it lives up to the hype. I think it was more of a hype check, really. Like I, I want to see this. You know, I want to be in there. And uh, yeah. So, back to two thousand. Two thousand Limp Biscuit releases this song called "Take a Look Around" for the Mission Impossible Two soundtrack. And they use the fucking the Mission Impossible theme at the beginning of it. Like it's it's really cool actually to hear it on a guitar instead of I don't know his piano maybe. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe violin. I don't know. Anyway, to hear <clears throat> hear somebody play it, so like West Borland play it. And uh I was just like, man, this is sick. Like I turned to Meg. We're having a good time. There's like a few songs in, and I'm like, that they you start to hear the 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 theme, and I was like, this is fucking sick. I'm having a great time at this point. Definitely lots of beers in me. Uh, definitely some like some CBD because my joints were fucking aching. All right, so we're chilling <laughs> and uh like old man status. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so we're in there. <clears throat> the fucking theme starts to play 
I turned to Meg and I'm like, you know what? I would love to be in the in the middle of this shit right now. <laughs> and Meg goes, like out of out of character too. She goes, then do it. I said, what? Like she's usually like a hang, hey, come hang out with me, like while we watch this. She's like, go for it. And I said, okay. And so I give her my shit, and because I don't want to lose anything, and uh, because. I got. I guess I got to preface this too. At the time, so Olympus gets a headliner of this day. Okay, so there's barely. I don't think there is another show happening. Maybe on the littlest of stages. But this whole festival is there, like at this one stage, and I was like, "All right, fuck it. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this." So I give her my shit. I start booking it into this fucking crowd. Okay. Luckily, this crowd, this crowd was really cool and, like, chill about it. But I start walking as quick as I can. And, like, I'm hearing the whole song. <clears throat> it's going. And, all right, pause pause this episode right now and listen to up to three minutes into the song. At the three-minute mark, there is a break. Okay, it's only a five-minute song, five-and-a-half-minute song. And there's only. A, yeah, only, <laughs> only five and a half minutes. Long. And uh, sure. what had to be a theme for a, mu- a movie? So, uh, yeah, I think the whole credits at the beginning of that movie, they're playing the song. Anyway, at the three minute mark, there is a break in it where just the guitar starts starts playing, and there's like a few lyrics, right? And then there's a huge breakdown right after it, like three fifteen probably. So I'm like making my way through this crowd, right? I'm like, oh shit, like oh shit. And at I don't know what like it was it had to have been fate, right? So I I walk into the middle of this pit that's completely si- like it's a silent, there's nothing happening at three minutes. And like a few seconds later, this whole fucking crowd starts jumping and this thing starts spinning, right? And the when you know everyone starts to jump or whatever, right at that break, <laughs> my feet are in the air, and this motherfucker took me and threw me across this whole goddamn <laughs> pit. Like I'm talking, launched my ass. Like I was on one side, and then on the complete opposite side, my fucking watch almost fell off. Like I got broke down like beat the fuck up like look like i got this scar right here just from this anyway (laughs) like um fucking i get up and so anyways the cool thing about any kind of pit is like people help you up as soon as you fall so get up start doing the whole thing for the rest of that song and then uh it's done and i was like all right cool that was the experience and i'm like all right i'm out of here fuck this and uh that was it so it was pretty much those two minutes, two and a half minutes. I walk out and Meg's like, what the fuck happened to you? Because <laughs> I walk out, the whole side of me has dirt and grass and I'm like fucked up. Okay. And my my elbows are bleeding everywhere. And I'm just like, uh, that, that song, I, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, dude, but I, but I didn't tell you like, have you ever seen somebody do a jump ball and then get pushed, like yeah. in basketball? That's yeah. what happened. It was a jump yeah, ball. Yeah, just got launched. Yeah. And this dude fucking took my momentum and put me on the other side. Yeah, it was, it was impressive. Honestly, I was impressed that I it was like that far, but because it was not small, it was like a very big circle. So I was like, Jesus Christ, man! I, I, mean, I felt like a fucking ton of bricks though. Good thing I had those beers and CBD in me, though. Yeah. Because it would have hurt Thank way you. more. But, yeah. Hey, uh, see, what Adam's not telling you is that he laughed very hard the first time he heard this story. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, it's just, I think it's funny, too. I also think it's funny you trying to compare your experience to Woodstock 99. <laughs> no, it's it's not that. It was, it's, the, the point of telling the, the Woodstock 99 thing is to, to say that I was trying to live that dream, you know, yeah. of, of the madness, but no. 
It was definitely not that. It was like we didn't burn it's anything like, down, or we didn't. It's like down. for a second there. It's like, have you seen the? Uh, it's like uh, the Jason Momoa, like at the Metallica concert. Like he's like in the pit, and it's just like them literally running around in a circle, like almost holding hands. <laughs> no. They're like, what did make you do? And then people in the comments are like, could you imagine if Jason Mo was in a pit with you? I'm like, do what? Ring around the rosy? It's like, yeah, no one's <laughs> pushing that guy. Are you me? <laughs> well, but the whole video was just them going <laughs> in a circle, just walking around in a circle. Oh, <laughs> hell no. This, this was not it was that. like, okay, yeah, this was not that. It was everything that I wanted it to be, but just not at Woodstock 99. Like, yeah, Google that video there. Just my Mo right now. Metallic, my Metallica show. It's like the stupidest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> um. Oh, dude, it's like a high, high hit on Google. Right, we're gonna, I'm gonna watch it real quick. These fuckers on me with. Okay. <laughs> this is a real weak pit. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I was that, like, oh man, this is that like, but I guess when Metallica played in LA, like on their tour, yeah, this is like recent, like over the summer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's just walking around. Yeah, no, exactly right. He's a big dude. Yeah, he's a really big dude. But yeah, no, uh, that was not the case. That's yeah. not what happened for me. <laughs> that's true. Also, that's on concrete, which would be fucking gnarly. That's exactly, gnarly. that's what I was saying. I was like, that's not even a pit. Yeah, like, not. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Bring around the roses. Yeah, that was weird. No, it, this this was definitely lived up to the hype, minus, like, burning the, the rest of the festival yeah. down. But, you know, you can only dream. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, we went a long time. Yeah, dude. Anyways. That story took forever, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I started it too. I started it too low, too like, early. You know, she was just like, "This is the story. That's it." Yeah, it took forever. My bad. My bad, everybody. Anyways. How many people were at that festival? Though, just curious. Like, oh, just that day, I think. I want to say, I want to say forty thousand that day, but yeah. I want to. Yeah. I want to say it's a lot more than that. It's just crazy to me that like a a festival just that themed, you know what I mean? Like yeah, just one strict theme of like heavy metal hardcore, you know, like the that many people would go. Yeah. Um Um it's because even like I feel like Riot Fest used to be that, even Riot Fest kind of changes their format. <laughs> this past year, a record a hundred and eighty thousand people packed louder than life for, during its four day run. Yeah, that's for like 000. four days combined. You know what I mean? Like who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like four okay. days combined when it's actually like thirty thousand or something each day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, probably yeah, probably forty thousand I'd say. You know? Yeah. Like it could be anywhere. I mean it could be anywhere in between. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm trying to see, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fucking people, dude. Oh, that's crazy. There, oh, sorry, I'm gonna look at the Wikipedia. Um, so in 2023, 180,000, right? In 2016, 50,000. Damn. That's nuts. Yeah. And that's super crazy. Yeah, apparently it's the biggest um uh like heavy festival in North America. So but it's cool. I mean you had people though at this particular time that were like the headliners are Foo Fighters, Tool, Avenge Sevenfold, and Green Day. <laughs> So and like you have some other people in there though, like you know, Weezer, Rancid, Godsmack, Megadeth. Yeah. Like Weezer is the random one kind of that oh, yeah. that bunch. Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, uh, Run the Jewels was there on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot they were there. Yeah. Um a bunch of people, but like 
That's it is kind of weird how they're like keeping it lumped into that. Like, I mean, it's probably because they did share with uh, Rich because the machine, but yeah, <clears throat> definitely. But the last last year, they had the headliners were Nine Inch Nails, Slipknot, Kiss, and Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Alice in Chains. But it means like a bunch of bunch of motherfuckers. That... This show, honestly, the this show is is pretty cool to go to. But I don't know. Pretty weird. Machine Gun Kelly was a headliner on twenty twenty one. I guess that's when he put out that uh that, like emo record he did. I don't know. Anyway, there's a, there's a video of him. Uh, somebody was that like. Uh, it's like Forbes under thirty or Forbes thirty or something. It was, it was yeah. hilarious because he's like thirty three. But oh really? <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's like under thirty, Forbes under thirty. But anyway, some dude like came up on stage and he popped up real quick. He's like, "My man, my man, what are you doing?" <laughs> like <laughs> some guy in the crowd, you know, like I was yeah. trying to get on stage to talk to him. And like security came. He's like, "This is a glue man." Like that's he ain't gonna do so shit. Weird. So. That's such a weird thing. Yeah. Say. My first thing happened, but I think the comments were funny too because I was just like, dude, he's 33. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, thanks for sticking it out through all of our stories. Uh, this is Quick Sixer Podcast. Uh, please subscribe, check out all of our feeds, all the shows come out in the 6th, 12th, 18th, 24th of each month. It's been your boys, Pat Ars, and Panich. We have-